joining us at St. Luke. It is a joy to worship together, even though we are apart. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Bring light into the darkness of our hearts, and anoint us with your Spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello, Brownie. How are you feeling today? services for a while? I've been hibernating since last year. You should know that. Does that mean I can't say hi to all the kids at St. Luke? No. Look out there at the camera. We're going to be recording our worship services so that people can stay connected to St. Luke. You mean I'm going to be on TV? Wow! I'm going to be a TV star. Can I sing a song or dance? Well, maybe in a minute or so. But first, let's tell a story about Jesus. Yeah, that's what we should do. Jesus is great. Jesus is my buddy. Jesus is cool. So what did he do today? Jesus is our best friend. He's the best friend of everyone, and he loves us no matter what. You always say that. That's because it's true. Everyone, Jesus loves us no matter what. Jesus saw a young man who was born blind. Oh, that's sad. Yes, but the good news is that Jesus told his disciples that the young man was a good person and that God was going to do something great for him so all the people could sing praises to God. What did he do? Did he hug the man and tell him he loved him? He put mud in his eyes and told him to go wash in the pool. I got mud in my eyes when I snuggled up in my cave. It was a mess. Mud isn't so bad. Well, this mud was the cure for the young man. When he washed his eyes, he could see. Jesus healed him and showed him his love. Wow, Jesus is the best. I'd like to sing a song. Maybe the kids watching can sing along with me, and you too. It's called Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to hail me long. They are weak and he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. And so 
spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, sins. And are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and 
believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and, the, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say, see, your sin remains. The reading of the gospel. Praise God! Let me tell you my story. I was blind. I was born that way. Then one day when I had someone lead me to the place where I normally sit to beg for money, I heard a commotion. There were people coming. And as they approached, I heard someone say, Lord, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents? My heart sank. I began to think, what did I do? What did I do that was wrong? And then I thought, well, I was, I was born this way. What could I have done before I was born? And my parents, what could they have done? They loved me. They cared for me. They taught me the scriptures. They brought me to synagogue. What could they have done? My heart sank until I heard the words of the rabbi. He said, nobody sinned. This man didn't sin, nor did his parents. And then... I heard the steps coming toward me, and this rabbi, he knelt before me. And when he knelt there, I heard him spit into the ground. And the next thing I knew, he was putting mud in my eyes, and I began, I began to, to squish, I began to just cry out. But then I felt his warmth, the warmth of his fingers, as he put this mud into my eyes. And then he told me, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. So I told the boy who was next to me, take me to the pool, and we went to the pool. Could this be the day? The pool of Siloam, it was a place that, they, that saved the people of Israel when the Assyrians were coming to get them. So I knelt down and I put my whole head into the pool. And the next thing I knew was I washed the mud out of my eyes. I saw light in the water around me. I pulled my head out of the water and, and I could see, I could hear the voices, the voices that I knew, I could see their faces. Everybody that I knew, literally, were before my eyes. And then I heard them arguing. There was a group that didn't know me that was there at the pool and they said, is this the man who was born blind? And another one said, no, 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 he is just somebody that looks like and all the while I was crying out, no, it's me, it's really me. And then they grabbed me by the arms and led me to the synagogue to stand before the Pharisees. And they told the Pharisees my story about how I was blind and that I can see. And the Pharisees looked at me and they said, how is it that you're able to see? And I told them my story. That, I, that, I, that this rabbi Jesus had put mud in my eyes and I went to the pool of Siloam and I knelt and I washed it out and look, I can see. And they saw my parents who had come in. And they said, is this your son? Yes. This is our son. We know that he was born blind, but he can see. How did this happen? And my parents knew 
They knew that they didn't want this Messiah person. And they wanted to, to be, they were afraid and they didn't want to say anything. They said, ask him. So they asked me again. They asked me again and they said, who did this to you? And when I looked at them, something came over me. I said, you've already asked me that question. Look, I can see. All I know is that I was blind and I can see. But listen, this is truly amazing. Because you think that this person cannot possibly heal on the Sabbath? And you think that he's not from God? Do you really? Are you wanting to be his disciples? And they got very angry at me. Get him out of here. Throw him out. You are one of his disciples. We're disciples of Moses. I loved. And for the first time in my life, I was able to walk, seeing my way to my home. And Jesus found me. And Jesus looked at me and said, Do you believe in the Son of Humanity? And I said, Who is he? Where is he? Tell me so that I can go and see him and believe. And Jesus said, you have seen him. You see him now. It's me. And I began to praise God and I began to sing hallelujah to God. And I said, glory to you, O Lord. I was blind, but now I see. Today, we suffered a crisis, a crisis that has gotten to us, and we don't understand why. What did we do wrong? Who's to blame? Well, no one's to blame. But this is a way that God can really show forth through us, through a way that we can gather together, like this, virtually, or we can do telephone calls. We can have our prayers for one another. We can reach out to one another in ways that we have never done before. How does God get the glory from this? Well, because God has called us to go wash. Not to wash our eyes out, but to wash our hands, to be there to be comfort for one another. This is how we reach out to each other and know that God is with us. Yes, God gets the glory because you and I are doing what God has called us to do, to love our neighbor before we love ourselves, to care for one another. God has come to us, and now he asks us, go wash and spread the good news. Amen.
Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of love, open the hearts of the church and the world to all who testify to your deeds of power. Raise up voices in your church that are often silenced or overlooked due to age, gender expression, race, or economic status. God of creation, empower us to care for the land and all living things that dwell in it and beneath it. Provide rich soil for crops to grow, bring rain to land suffering drought, protect hills and shorelines from damage caused by erosion. God of insight, bring peace to all people and nations. Anoint leaders who seek goodness, righteousness, and truth on behalf of all. Frustrate the efforts of those who would seek to cause violence or terror. God of healing, you care for our needs even before we ask. Come quickly to all who seek prayer this day. Especially, we pray for the healing of Kim, Fred, Baby Jack, Ginger, Hugh and Trudy, Herb, Bob, Carol, Elizabeth, Christine, Luke, Janice, Ethel, Ned, Sharon, Nancy, Alex, Linda and her son Billy, Jeannie, Martin, Jim, Charlotte, Ron, Patty, Ken, Eric, Jennifer and Pete, Gloria, Joe, Christopher, Lynn, Jean, Melanie, Stephanie, and Sarah. We pray for those who are grieving, the friends and family of Harry, Jean, and Alice. For our deployed military, Patrick and Abigail. For our homebound, Lynn, Marnie, Ruth, and Dale. And for those with other concerns, Siddhartha, Teddy and Aaron, and the Chicken Busso Project. God of mercy, we pray for our hospitals, nursing homes, and other healthcare facilities that you would be present among those who provide care and for those who need care. God of wisdom, we pray for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the World Health Organization, medical research facilities, and the scientists who are working on tests and cures for the coronavirus. God of peace, we pray for our children who are fearful from what they hear and see around them. We ask for patience in times of school closures and for the guidance of school administrators as they make decisions for the good of our community. God, who calms the storms, we pray for those workers who are anxious about the safety of their workplaces, the uncertainty in how work will be accomplished in the days ahead. We pray for guidance amid financial uncertainties. God of the resurrection, you call out to those who are asleep and awaken them to new life with you. We give thanks for your saints. Join us together with them as your children in this world and the next. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.